Hey guys, Tim here, back again for Droid Life, this time bringing you 20 plus tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Uh, as you can imagine, Samsung built a lot of software and features into TouchWiz this year for the Note 7, so if you don't mind, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, to start it off, we're going to head to the lock screen, not necessarily the lock screen, but we're going to turn off the display. This feature that I'm about to show off was, I believe, first available on the Note 5, and actually can be quite handy. Uh, when the display is off, you can take out the S Pen, and if you're having a conversation with someone and you need to jot down a note, save a phone number, etc., uh, you can do that, and then you can actually just insert the S Pen, and it'll automatically save, or you can hit save, delete, and you can also sort of uh, customize the note however you want to take it. Uh, definitely a nice little, little thing that Samsung builds in there. Uh, also, going back to the lock screen, once you have the lock screen turned on, you'll see two icons here, which, which are shortcuts, obviously one for the phone dialer and then one on the right uh, for the camera. Um, as you can imagine, if you open the dialer, it will head right into the dialer application. But more importantly, uh, you can hit into the camera, but then even to do that a bit quicker, you can double tap on the home button down here. And you can actually do that from anywhere, uh, whether the phone is turned on, whether you're inside an app or et cetera, et cetera and then you can just go ahead and start shooting photos. Uh, what I think is a bit cooler though, if you head into the settings here, under picture size, which is the first option, uh, down there on the bottom it says save raw and JPEG files. So if you like shooting in raw and you like going back and uh, sending the photos to your desktop, messing around with them in Adobe, Photoshop, or something like that, uh, it gives you a lot more comprehensive uh, ability uh, to edit photos uh, after the, the picture is taken. Uh, moving on down a little bit, we have ways to take pictures, and if we head into there, you will see that there are a few different ways, say like on a Motorola device, if you have the camera up and it focuses automatically, you can actually just touch on the display, and it'll take a photo. So Samsung has built that feature in. Uh, I don't find myself using it all too much, because I have a few other ways uh, that I do it. If you're in, big into taking selfies, you can actually use the heart rate sensor to take a photo. So say if you've got the camera out here and you've got your finger right on the fingerprint sensor, then it'll snap a photo. Definitely a nice little thing to know, especially for selfies when you're holding the phone sort of out there. Uh, you don't have to be over here trying to hit the shutter button or anything like that. So definitely a nice little touch. Uh, moving down a little bit, we have motion photo. What motion photo does is it when you tap on the shutter button, it records a short video and it gives you a, a bit more context when you're taking a photo. Sort of like when you go back in time in your gallery to see it, uh, you can watch the little clip and then the shot is taken. It, it's cool for in like the context uh, perspective, you know, being able to see what's going on around you while you're taking photos. And then if we go down just a little bit more to voice control, definitely one of my favorite little features. Uh, you can say things like smile, cheese, capture, or shoot, or record video. And the phone hears those commands and automatically does it. So we'll go right back into the camera and I'll sort of show that off. Cheese, cheese, smile, record video. Record video. Ah, uh, there it goes. So now it's recording video and of course I can just press stop and back out of there. Uh, once we're on the home screen, uh, the S Pen hasn't changed all that much, say, from the Note uh, 5. However, like, you know, you got your basic air command, you've got your S Note, Smart Select, Screen Writing, that's all stuff we've gone over before. There's one thing I actually found really cool, though, and that's Magnify. So if you're on a website that has small font or anything like that, you can actually just hover the S Pen above the device, and it'll magnify whatever it is you're looking at. And then you can change that setting. Uh, by tapping there, maybe I just want it 150% uh, percent magnification, and uh, definitely a nice little feature. Um, my eyes aren't aren't gone quite yet, so I haven't found myself needing it too much, but it is a nice little thing to have there. Uh, on the home screen, again, not too much has changed on the home screen, but there there is actually quite a quite a lot to go over. If you do the two finger pinch down, you can access a screen grid. And then, so I have mine set to five by five, but you can change it to four by four or four by five, changing the rows and the columns. And that will allow you to either have more icons on your home screen or less icons. That's why I sort of go for that five by five. It's uh, the perfect balance, at least for me. 
Um, back there when you do that two pinch, you've got wallpapers and themes. So Samsung has done a really good job at allowing users to customize the look of TouchWiz. I know it's something that uh, not a lot of people enjoy, but you can actually customize TouchWiz enough to where it almost looks like stock Android. I know I'm crazy for even saying that, but it's true. Um, so say we have a theme under here. Uh, this is a material design theme naturally, and I can simply just apply it. You can find this one for free in the theme store there's also uh, paid themes and there's a whole lot of different stuff you can choose from and uh, frankly I think it's really cool there's super bright themes not too bright themes so as you can see it changes all my icons and then on top of that you can actually change the icons um, separately so you don't have to change an entire entire look if all the all you want to do is change the icons and then right here you can access a store naturally I'm in airplane mode so I can't access it but it's definitely something that you can play with and it allows you to really uh, make the device your own and you know as someone who appreciates Android for what it is uh, that's a big deal uh, one thing I will suggest as soon as you boot up the, the device for the first time do that two pinch theme scroll to the right or to the left and then you'll see briefing here flipboard briefing go ahead and disable that um, in my opinion when you're kind of scrolling it out it slows the device down quite a bit and not a fan if you if you enjoy uh, flipboard that's fine um, I'm not the biggest fan like I said so I just go ahead and disable that immediately and then I don't access it then when I'm scrolling it um, on the right side here as you can see I have edge panel enabled and that allows me to bring it out and you can actually customize all these app shortcuts and uh, if I need, uh, if say I'm inside of another app, say I'm inside Chrome, then I can just pop out Edge Display and then access a different app. Like so I can open up Instagram or Chrome or my gallery or my clock, whatever I might need. Um, also, if we scroll through the Edge panel, you can access People Edge, access Task Edge. So if I need to quickly create a calendar event or snap a selfie or something, I can access all of that. Of course, I got my Yahoo Sports, CNN, and weather, and all that good stuff. And all that stuff is actually customizable right there in the bottom left. You can hit settings, and everything is uh, changeable. You can disable, enable different things. You can get a compass going. There's a whole lot to do. Moving on, in the app drawer. So when it comes out of the box, I'm going to actually show you what it comes like out of the box. It comes in what's called the custom order. And for me, this is a... Uh, sort of an OCD nightmare. I've got uh, apps in different orders. It's not alphabetical. I've got uh, little notifications going on. I've got folders at the top. It can be a nightmare. So what I do is I hit on that three dot there in the top right and I press sort and alphabetical. And all of a sudden everything is back to normal. It's all in alphabetical order. I can find things when I need to. Um, definitely something I would recommend because that's not how it comes out of the box oddly enough. Uh, Moving on, a big thing with the Samsung devices is they're kind of like secure, it's Knox, and what the Note 7 brings is a secure folder. A secure folder at first I was like, eh, not that big of a deal. It's actually pretty sweet. So secure folder, uh, you can either unlock it, say with a fingerprint or an iris scanner, and unless you unlock it, sorry I had to use my eyes there to unlock it, <laughs> so when you unlock it you can access things that are only found inside of this secure folder so for example I'm gonna show you if I, I open up my secure folder gallery then these photos that I've taken through secure folder will only be shown in the secure folder so if I open up the standard gallery app these photos won't be in there I can also transfer existing photos in my gallery to my secure folder um, so if you have photos that might be sensitive or you don't want other people uh, having access to them that have access to your device, secure folder is the way to go. You can set a fingerprint, iris scanner, passcode, password, um, a lot of different cool stuff you can do. So I'm going to actually show you an example of uh, how you can take a photo through secure folder. And we'll snap, a, snap two photos. We'll back out of there. And inside of that gallery are the two photos I've taken. Now, if I back out of there and go into my standard gallery, those two photos won't be in there. I know it looks like they are because I took these photos from that lock screen, but I can, uh, I can assure you th these are not them. 
However, now on the cool side of that, if you are inside of your gallery and you have a photo you've taken and want to transfer it in, you can hit that top right button and then move to secure folder. And so then that photo is going to be accessible only through secure folder. It will no longer be in your gallery. So you've got your secure folder in there, gallery, and then it should just be right around here somewhere. All these photos look the same, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but definitely secure folder, I highly recommend. It's actually been a pretty cool little feature that Samsung built in. Moving on, we've got the notification pull down, uh, something I'm sure we're all familiar with. Of course, uh, Samsung did switch it up a little bit. They moved the brightness toggle to the bottom of the system toggles. Not a huge fan. It could be worse though. Uh, you can actually edit all of these system toggles, like the positioning positioning of them. Uh, you can long press on them. You can swap them in and out. Say if I want always on display, I can just move it on up and then simply access it from there. And then when you're done customizing, you, you just press done and you're all good there. Moving on, we're going to dive into the settings menu. And this is where stuff gets extreme because like I said, Samsung built in a lot of stuff in here. So where we're going to start is the display. And we're probably just going to move right down the list. Uh, the blue light filter is perfect for if you're in bed, you're reading sort of your ebook or something. Uh, it has a lot less of the uh, harmful sort of light that might uh, hurt, not, not necessarily hurt your eyes, um, but it could um, make things a less um, harder or less readable. There we go, there's the word I'm looking for. Um, so the blue light filter, and actually there's a system toggle for that, which you can enable in the pull down blue light filter right there, uh, easily accessible. This is also where you can change the font. You can enlarge the font, change the font to maybe a comic sans or something of the sort. There's, there's a ton of different fonts that are downloadable from the Samsung store. Um, definitely a nice little, nice little touch. I mean, Samsung, again, they did a good job at allowing users to customize, you know, what they see on their device. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, on this updated version of TouchWiz, you have screen resolution here. Of course, I have mine set to WQHD, which is that 2560 by 1440. But you can actually toggle it down to full HD and HD. And what that's going to do is it might it should make your battery life a bit better samsung doesn't label it as a way to save your battery um but the fact that the phone isn't having to push all those pixels uh it's, it's probably a good move and if you really don't think you need wqhd i mean you bought the phone right you would think you might want it but if you feel like full hd is just fine um then that should work for you just good um moving down Always on display, one of my favorite things that, about Android for the last couple of years, thanks to Motorola and their um, always on displays. So I have mine enabled. And in here, this is where you can actually change the layout. So under here, layouts, you can show what to choose, whether a clock, calendar, or an image. And uh, the one I have right now, you can change up the background. So it might be a little hard to see, but there's different backgrounds you can choose. I like that one, then you can change up the color. And then one that uh, people really seem to enjoy is choosing their own photos. <laughs> so I have one right here, that's me wearing a tinfoil hat during the Droid Life show, and then you can simply hit apply. And now when you turn off the display, and always on display turns on, hard to see, but there I am on the always on display. Definitely a nice little touch, you can have a picture of your dog, your girlfriend, your wife, uh, your kids, etc., etc. Moving on down, we have night clock. Uh, when this feature is turned on and it's enabled, you know, given the time of day or night, um, always on display will not turn on. So if I enable it and I lock this, lock the display, always on display won't turn on, but instead a night clock will turn on. Might be really hard to see because it's super light, but right here in the bottom, there's a clock. It shows me the time. And that's something you can just do at night uh, that way you don't have to mess with always on display. If you have your nightstand over there, you can see the phone lined up just fine. Going to go ahead and turn that off. And uh, the last one under display I think I need to show you is the status bar. This is where you can go to enable the show battery status there on the top right. Uh, if you don't want to see how much battery percentage is left, simply disable. Moving on down. We're going to hit up advanced features. And this is where you're going to access things like Smart Stay, 
the games, the game launcher, um, do not disturb, save power, record, uh, for game launcher. Uh, there's a lot of cool features in here. And the third one is that games and that game launcher and game tools. So if you're a big mobile gamer, you can head into here, you can record your gameplay, you can actually tune back the processor where it's not using as much juice for your game so you can game for longer, which is always a good thing. And uh, uh, you can also take screenshots and record. Uh, this is also where you're going to manage things like the S Pen, sort of the Air View, Air Command, and all that stuff. Uh, more importantly, I think if you scroll a little bit lower, you can hit up Device Management. And this is a built-in sort of what I call a task killer. Uh, it's going to show you sort of how optimized your phone is. Right now I'm at 93 out of 100. And if I hit optimize now, basically what it does is it's going to close any running applications, clear the cache, and stuff like that. I mean, really, it's sort of like the old days of Android where if you felt like your phone was lagging, you could just hit, use a task killer. And it'll kill all the background applications and uh, stuff going on. And it should speed up your phone a little bit. Heading back in, we have right here, sound and vibration. And under here, this is where I use the do not disturb. So for example, if you tap on it, uh, I have turn on as scheduled and I love this. So say at 10.30 at night, I want my phone to never vibrate or anything like that because I'm getting ready for bed. I don't want anyone bugging me. So I can turn it on and then I can have it turn off at say 7.30 in the morning when my alarm goes off so I'm not missing any notifications or hangout messages coming in. Uh, it can be a, pretty much a lifesaver. And you can also disable it if it's already turned on, of course. And um, you can customize the times for whenever might be best for you. Heading back into the settings menu, we have lock screen and security. Definitely an important one. Uh, first, you've got your screen lock type. So I have to enter in my code here to access that. You've got your basic swipe, no security pattern, pin, password, but then it gets real fun with fingerprints and irises. I have both enabled just for the sake of this video. I'm not a huge fan of the iris scanner because I sometimes wear glasses, and if you're wearing glasses, the iris scanner may not, might not work well. It also might not work well if you're wearing contact lenses, um, which I do not wear, but again, I wear glasses so frequently uh, that the iris scanner sometimes doesn't mess up, especially if the glasses aren't clean. They've gotta be some clean glasses, so. Uh, but where you can manage both of those things, and I always suggest having multiple fingerprints enabled. Um, Got to unlock it again. I got fingerprint one, my thumb, of course, and then fingerprint two. I do fingerprint two as my right index finger, or whichever is my dominant hand. Uh, say if someone else, I give my phone to someone, they say, hey, can you unlock it? I can just sort of reach over while they're holding it and, uh, and unlock it for them. Uh, under the irises, it is actually pretty nifty. I didn't know you could do this until uh, not too long ago. So I've got my irises saved. Of course, you can only have one set of irises for each phone. But then there's a mask you can choose for the preview screen on the lock screen. And you've got your sort of basic kind of bionic man looking thing. Two basic circles. A sort of VR looking like a HUD display. Bunny rabbit. A cat. And uh, some other human eyes. I think it would be real cool if Samsung worked on some more of those, maybe a T-Rex head or something like that. Um, but it's another way you can sort of customize the look of the device. Never a bad thing. Under that lock screen and security is a pretty important spot for unknown sources. And unknown sources is pretty important for people like me just because I'm always installing apps that aren't from Google Play. Say it's like an unreleased game or something that I have. So it's always good to know where that is. And then right under there is Secure Startup. Secure Startup allows you to enable uh, a pin or say like a passcode that needs to be entered uh, before the device boots up. And actually it's going to be the uh, pattern sort of lock. And uh, before the device fully boots, you'll enter in the, pin, the pattern and then the device boots up and you have access to everything like that. It's another kind of added layer of security uh, which, you know, for, for a device like this, it's pretty expensive and you're going to want to protect it, I think, the best you can. Uh, and given that there is so much stuff in this settings menu and on the device itself, I always tell people that this search feature right here, it's a lifesaver. It's great. And uh, the one feature uh, that I use it for actually is Smart Lock. And so if you don't know what Smart Lock is, it's a built-in Android thing. This is not exclusive 
Uh, it's a Samsung or this Galaxy Note 7. And Smart Lock allows you to set um, smart locator, like trusted places, on body detection. So say if I'm in a trusted place, if I'm, I'm, if I'm in my house, I don't want to be unlocking my phone all the time, so I can simply set that there. And then whenever I'm in the vicinity of my house, my phone won't lock on me. Um, I can also set trusted devices. If I have my smartwatch connected, my phone won't lock. Uh, trusted voice and my on-body detection where if I put it in my pocket and then take it out, it can tell that I still am sort of in possession of the device so it won't lock. So uh, there is a lot of stuff for the Note 7. Uh, I could probably talk for another 20 minutes on other stuff, but basically this video is just a help you quickly master TouchWiz, and uh, if I missed anything, feel free to leave it down in the comments so other people will know. Uh, I mean, really, you could go on all day about the Note 7. There's just so much stuff. So if you have any additional questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and I can uh, get to them. But until then, enjoy life. Peace.